We need a way to store our memories. But unlike us, computers can't just store memories in quantum space time. They need an actual physical location for storage. But like us, we need short term and long term storage, just like we need cups of coffee. So grab yourself a cup, let's talk memory. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ovi. This is part five of my PC build. And today we're gonna to be talking about both short-term and long-term memory. Now in your brain, your short-term memory is stored in the frontal lobe and the hippocampus middle of your head. In a non-organic PC, it's stored in random access memory modules, right? Also better known as RAM. The first thing when picking RAM is figuring out how much RAM you actually need. The purpose of RAM is to provide a storage location for applications on your computer to use to upload and download data so that it can run smoothly. Generally, the more RAM you have, the smoother your PC will run. If you're using your PC for nothing more than browsing the web and checking your emails, you don't really need anything more than eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you like to play video games or you do some editing, you should go with about 16 gigabytes of RAM. 16 gigabytes is the standard nowadays to operate any application and game without too many hiccups. If you do 4K gaming or 4K video editing, you should probably go closer to 32 gigabytes. And if you're doing 3D modeling, you want at least 32 gigabytes. I use Blender for 3D modeling and animation. I've read on forums that Blender can use over 32 gigabytes sometimes. So eventually I wanna get 64 gigabytes, but 64 gigabytes would put me outside of my budget currently for the PC build. So I'm sticking with 32 gigabytes with room to upgrade in the future. If you plan on upgrading in the future, don't buy four sticks of RAM for a total of 32 gigabytes if your plan is to get to 64. Buy two sticks of 16 gigabytes each to get 32 gigabytes. That way you have room to upgrade in the future. Now, most motherboards are gonna have four DIMM slots for your memory. For this motherboard in particular, it's labeled B1, B2, A1, A2. If you're installing only one stick of RAM, it should be put into A2. If you're installing two, it should be installed on A2 and B2. You leave a gap. And if you're installing four, then obviously you're using up all the slots. The reason you want to leave a gap, there's basically two channels for your memory and then two slots per channel. So if you put the sticks right next to each other, you basically just put 32 gigabytes onto one channel and zero on the other, and that's gonna affect your computer's performance. Don't do that. So now that you pick the capacity of your RAM, what about speed? Speed of your RAM is gonna be given in megahertz. When you install RAM, I believe the PC defaults to 2,133 megahertz. Correct me if I'm wrong, but your RAM sticks might be capable of more. In order to enable the higher speeds, you have to go into your motherboard's BIOS settings and enable, I believe it's XMP, and that'll unlock the full speed of your RAM. So the speed is basically how fast you can read and write data, 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 data. How fast data can be stored or read from a RAM stick. The higher the speeds, the better. For example, your PC is gonna boot up a lot faster with 5,000 megahertz of 16 gigabytes of RAM than it would with 2133 megahertz of 128 gigabytes of RAM. The new 12th generation Intel CPUs can actually handle like ridiculous speeds of RAM like 5,000 megahertz or 6,000 megahertz even, but AMD CPUs don't go up to that speed, so you don't need to get something that fast. The sweet spot for AMD CPUs is between 3,200 and 36. 600 megahertz, so I opted to get the 3600 megahertz. Also, if you have an AMD CPU, don't go out and buy a DDR5 RAM. DDR5 is only supported by the Intel's 12th generation CPUs. AMD does not support it yet. The DDR5 RAM modules, they have a notch right in the center of the stick where the DDR4 is a little offset. So if you buy a DDR5 stick, it's not gonna fit in your DDR4 motherboard. And then if you wanna get real nitpicky, you can look into CL timings or CAS latency. Uh, you'll normally get a number like CL16 or CL18. You wanna have a lower number. CL timings is basically how long it takes the memory to find 
where the memory is stored. You can think of it like a library. Everything is stored on rows and columns, and that memory is like a book, right? That data is like a book. So how long does it take for the RAM stick to find that book in this library? Now, CL18 means that it takes 18 clock cycles in order to find said data. A CL16 only takes 16 cycles, so it's two cycles faster. But honestly, two cycles, you're talking a difference of 0.1 nanosecond. Like I said, it's for people who wanna be nitpicky. I personally don't care. What I ended up getting was the Corsair Vengeance RGB RTs. And it's 32 gigabytes, so there's two 16 gigabyte sticks. That lets me get two 16 gigabyte sticks later when I wanna to upgrade to 64 gigabytes. So these are DDR4, the 3600 megahertz, and the timing is CL18. Now, I wanted to go with Corsair because the RGBs on here, they're controllable by the IQ software and I would like all my RGBs to be controlled by one software so I don't have to have a million applications for different things on my computer. Corsair is known for making good quality PC products. Over half the builds that you're gonna see on the internet are gonna have Corsair RAM in it. Most of them actually use the Vengeance RGB Pro instead of the RTs, but I opted for the Vengeance RTs because one, I think it looks better. Two, there's a cool ship logo on the actual RGB strip where the RGB Pro does not have that. One of the cool features about this one, this one was actually meant for AMD processors. Normally when you install RAM, you have to go into the BIOS settings to enable the higher speeds. This one will automatically do it, so you don't have to do all of that. But really, I just like the ship logo. Installing RAM is very easy. You move the tabs out of the way on the motherboard. You put your, uh, you put your RAM sticks in. They only go in one way because it has the notch, and then you put the tab back in to lock it into place, and that's it. Let's do it. So we got our short-term memory installed so that our computer can run applications, but we still need a long-term memory solution to actually store your applications, to store your operating system and the thousands of pictures that you take on your phone that you're never gonna look at again. So when it comes to long-term storage solutions, you have a few options. You can either get an HDD, an SSD, or an NVMe. HDDs are hard disk drives. They are the most analog type storage solution that we have out there. Uh, basically, it's a spinning disk, kind of like a CD. It has a magnetic layer on it, and the data is stored through magnetism, really. It just stores zeros and ones in different places on the disk as it's spinning at however many RPMs. It actually sounds more advanced and complicated than a solid state drive, but it isn't. HDDs were pretty much all we had back in the day, but they're kind of getting phased out now because of SSDs. The problem with hard disk drives is that it has to spin, right? And you can only read and write so fast. They tend to be bigger and bulkier. You also want to make sure that they're stable. If you tilt them while it's spinning, you could scratch the drive. And then another thing that makes it slow is that when it goes to sleep, the disk stops moving. So when you need to boot up something you have to wait for the disk to spin back up to 7200 rpm or whatever it is before it can access any of the data but it's nice to have as a backup especially because they're so cheap for the price of like one terabyte ssd you could get an eight terabyte hdd your second option is to get a ssd or a solid state drive more specifically a sata drive now these are smaller than an hdd because they don't have a spinning disk instead it's rows upon rows of cells and each cell can store electrons and then all your data is stored digitally on these. This makes SSDs significantly faster when it comes to reading and writing data but your best form of memory is going to be through NVMe drives or M.2 drives. They install right onto your motherboard and they have faster speeds than SSDs. You still 
is a solid state drive, but it's faster than SATA drives. They're also smaller than SSDs, and also because it's being installed on your motherboard, it usually comes with a heat sink or there's a heat sink on your motherboard that allows for proper cooling. It keeps it running better and hopefully lasting longer. So NVMEs are the best place to install your operating system or any games on your applications that you want booting up right away. Now, there are a lot of options out there for M.2 drives, but really they're like comparing one fast card to another fast card. They're both ridiculously fast. Just pick the one that fits your budget and you're good to go. I went with the Western Digital Black SN770. It's also known as a game drive. So the size of it is one terabyte. I think one terabyte is the size that you should be going for. Just to tell you how fast these things are, this one goes up to 5,150 megabytes per second. Hard disk drives, are from 80 to 160 megabytes a second. And solid state drives are typically 200 to 550 megabytes a second. So this is like 10 times faster than a solid state drive. I like Western Digital. They have a dashboard application that lets you monitor the performance of your M.2 drive. And the cool thing about this one, why they call it a game drive, is that it can boost speeds up to 5150 megabytes a second. And this is important in games like if you have like Forza, for example, and it's loading maps, you sometimes get a stutter when the new map is loading. The faster you can read and write off a drive, the less likely you're gonna have that stutter. Now, do I really care about that? Not really. I got this one because it was the best price I could find. I got a one terabyte for about a hundred bucks and it's got great reviews. Western Digital has another one out that's actually a higher grade than this one and it can read and write up to 7,000 megabytes a second, but it's $50 more and let's be real, I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference. My motherboard has two slots for NVMEs. There's one right here and then there's one down here. Now this one has a heat sink, this one does not. So I'm gonna save this one for a future M.2 card that comes with a heat sink. Mine does not come with a heat sink, so I'm gonna install it into the bottom. Installing this is simple enough. You take the heat sink off, you slot the M.2 in, you screw it down, make sure to take the film off the thermal compound on the heat sink, and then reinstall the heat sink. Let's do it. That's it. Now my PC can have memories. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and help me grow this channel. Until next time.